Hello and welcome to this presentation that I'm doing for my mom in dedication to her. She was Diane Kohler, Yuk Sin Yi. She was born in 1926 and lived until November 2nd, 2015. She had a wonderful life, had many beautiful grandchildren and children, and a family that was with her until the end. This is a summary of her life that I dedicate to my mom, a very special person that I love and miss very much. I want to state right now that I'm probably not going to pronounce the words uh, for these cities and uh, towns very well, but I'll do my best. Diane Kohler was born in 1926 in Canton, China, also called Guangdong, and it was located in the South China Sea coast. The capital of Canton is Guangzhou, and her city of birth was Taishan City, or Taishan City. It has a million people today, but back then it was a much smaller place. Diane survived a brutal slaughter from the Japanese army that came in in March of 1941. Uh, there were actually 280 people that were killed at that time. She was 15 years old, and to escape the slaughter, she escaped to the hills and slept in the woods. She also told me a story where one of her brothers actually took her into the river to avoid being shot, and her mother and her also had a secret location inside of their house where they would hide until the Japanese um, soldiers would pass by. This image to the left is what she would see from her backyard, and on that hill uh, rice would be grown, but back then I also believe she told me that that was where the dead were actually buried. Diane was married to a man by the name of Shu Lim Wong. His uh, American name was Franklin, and this occurred in 1947. And after being married, she boarded a ship to the United States. Uh, Shu Lim was a World War II veteran in the Navy, and he was actually a neighbor that was introduced to her by her oldest aunt. When they got their ticket, which was $200 to go to the United States, they traveled on the General M.C. Meeks, and it was actually a passenger ship that was converted from a wartime ship uh, during World War II. After arriving in America, she landed in San Francisco, and this would be her home until uh, for the next six years, 1947 to 1953, she found a job sewing at a place called the Emporium. There's a picture of it on the left. And during this time, she had uh, given birth to three girls, Betty, Judy, and Jeannie. But due to a health issue with one of them, it caused them to relocate to a town called Belden, California, located in Northern California. And she ran what was called the Belden Cafe, which is still there today. From 1953 to 1957, Diane worked in Belden and also Rich Bar. But after that period of time, they had to relocate to Quincy. Uh, during this time, she also gave birth to her fourth child, April. And so she had four girls that she took with her to Quincy. This is a picture on the right of where the bank club used to be. Um, right across from the courthouse in downtown Quincy. In 1960, Diane divorced her husband, Franklin, and she also became a U.S. citizen. She was assisted by Judge Jaynes, who was actually a family friend, and other people that helped her, and this changed her life in a very positive way. In 1961, she met Merlin Kohler, whose nickname was Bub, that was my dad, and he was a firefighter at the time. He was also a military veteran, but he was in the Army. His role in Quincy uh, was a hotshot firefighter. He was in charge of the crews, and he also did uh, helicopter flying, and he would do smoke jumping, which is where you would get into a plane or a helicopter, and you would jump out with a parachute going into the smoke fire-filled area and he would attempt to then put out the fires by jumping literally into it. They were married in 1962, and they had a honeymoon 
which took them to places like Death Valley and Mexico. In 1968, six years later, they gave birth to a beautiful, perfect baby boy named Michael. I think I know him. At the time, they were living in East Quincy with the four girls, and they moved to 116 Main Street in down, uh, down from downtown Quincy, and it's the house that she lived in the rest of her life. It was directly across from the Forest Service, and it was a perfect place for Merlin, who was now an electrician, to just walk across to go to work. And the reason that he bought it for her was because it was also her favorite color, yellow. That's a picture of me on the left uh, with my dad. I was a couple months old. Here's a little information about her kids. Um, her first daughter, Betty, uh, gave birth to her first grandchild, which was Cindy. Uh, Betty was born in 1949 in San Francisco. Uh, and if you watch the arrows here, um, this is a picture of mom with Betty. And then in 1974, Betty gave birth to Cindy. And in 2004, Cindy gave birth to Callie. What's interesting about Callie's birth is that it was actually on my dad's birthday, which was November 28th, and here are a few pictures of Callie and her mom, Cindy, and here's a great one with my mom and Callie. Her second daughter, Judy, gave birth to two boys, Jason and Jeff. She was born in 1951 in San Francisco as well. Um, they live currently in Oroville, California, and this is a picture of the little tykes, which are not so little, sitting on their parents' laps, and a great picture with uh, Judy and Tom and my mom. Judy's two boys, Jason and Jeff. This is Jason, and this one is Jeff. They gave birth to uh, six grandchildren. Um, the, their names were Reed, Sarah, Emma, and Neil, and Jeff's two boys are Knox and Reese. Jason and his wife also adopted some children, so it was just a really big, beautiful family. Her third daughter, Jeannie, um, married a man by the name of Dennis. Uh, Jeannie was born in 1952, also in San Francisco, and they live in Rio Linda, California. Jeannie had two children, uh, Justin and Rigel. Here's a picture of Justin and Rigel with my mom. Jeannie's son, Justin, married uh, Amy, and they gave birth to a little girl named Elena. Here she is with my mom, and she really loved this little girl. And Rigel and her husband Grant were married in Quincy at the courthouse, and Rigel actually had the wedding at the courthouse so that my mom could attend because she wasn't able to travel that far, so that was very nice. Her fourth daughter, April, married a man by the name of Richard. April was born in Greenville, California in 1955. She lives in Rancho Marietta now with Richard. Uh, they had two boys, uh, Travis and Todd. And in this picture here, my mom actually made this for uh, Travis and his wife, Deb, and they're kind of twins. So it's a really cute picture with the two of them. And here's one with April and mom. These are April and Richard's two sons. Um, Todd gave uh, married Sarah. Uh, they live in Rancho Cordova. The oldest one, Madison, lives in San Diego, and there were two other girls, Bailey and Sophia, and they also live in the Rancho Cordova area. And finally, her son, Michael, uh, he gave, he was married to a woman by the name of Jenny, and during this time he gave birth, or the wife gave birth, to two children, Brianna and Olivia. The two girls, my girls, played a pretty large role with my parents. We just lived down the street, unlike my other family who came up as much as they could. Um, but they were fortunate enough to get to know my mom and dad a lot. And uh, Brianna and Olivia live in Sacramento, California with their mom. Here's a great picture with uh, Brianna and Olivia and Callie. Here are a few images of Brianna and Livia over the years. Um, here they are when they're little. Here's a great one with them and my mom. And this is the last photo that my daughter here, Brianna, was able to take with my mom before she passed. 
So my mom opened up a yarn shop back in the 70s, 1975, and this is the yellow house that she lived in. Here's her business card for Diane Kohler's Yarn Shop, where she did custom handmade sweaters and did alterations like she did in San Francisco. Um, this is an advertisement that she had, and this is my niece, uh, Cindy, in the picture. She maintained this business until 2006, which is the year that my father passed away. Although my father was a firefighter and electrician, his hobby was actually going out at night and stargazing. He had a telescope that he would use to look at the different planets and stars, and he was lucky enough to find a comet uh, back in 1977. It's called Comet Kohler, and at one point it had multiple tails and returns about every seven years. Uh, this is him receiving an award from the dean of the college at the time for his achievement. And this is an early picture of his uh, comet right when he found it. In 1982, I was lucky enough to go with my mom uh, back to her hometown. She hadn't been there in 30 years. Here's a picture of her sisters. We put a picture of her mom into the picture. Uh, that's, this is the backyard picture and a relative. And we were able to travel from uh, Hong Kong, where we stayed for about a month. We traveled by train to Taishan City, and from there we went up to Beijing and saw the Great Wall of China and many other beautiful things. We actually stayed with her sister Lin and got to meet her family there. It was a wonderful time. I can't remember too much. I was younger back then, but many of those people are here, and some came to the memorial, and it was thank you everybody for coming. And then she um, had a couple things that she liked to do, which was uh, knitting, of course. But she also loved to garden. She had beautiful trees and a garden in her backyard. But her um, two favorite things that she did was gamble and watch westerns. Here's a picture of her um, holding her winnings and another one here. And I would take her over to Reno every couple weeks, and she would get to gamble. And when she was at home, her favorite thing was watching westerns with John Wayne and Rifleman. And she just loved westerns, and I never knew why. So to conclude, um, Diane Kohler lived a very long and wonderful life. She will be missed. Um, she had many good times. She did go through some hardships during her journey to America and with her family. But she stayed positive and strong. Um, she had a very loving family that was with her until she died. She was a beautiful person and affected me in a very positive way. She had an outgoing personality, and people definitely knew who she was in Quincy. And I love you, Mom, and you will be missed. Thank you for watching this presentation.